Hey everybody. I don't normally do product review videos, but today I want to shoot one uh, simply because when I was looking for a kayak, I found very little good information about this particular kayak. Uh, so I want to shoot a video of my experiences with it so far. This is the Sun Dolphin Excursion 12 SS Recreational Fishing Kayak. And it is a sit inside kayak, it's not the sit on top version. This is the sit inside. So I don't really need to spend a lot of time going over the superficial features. If you've looked at this online or anywhere else, you know about all of the, um, you know, you can see the very self-explanatory bungee straps that go across the front. We've got a scupper plug up front. We've got a scupper plug in the rear. Uh, this unit here comes out. Simply pull these off. Uh, this whole unit right here pops out. So you've got that space there for carrying extra storage. This is a tow behind. You simply strap a cord to it and hook it to the back of the kayak and it'll tow along behind you. It is not waterproof, however. This is water resistant. It'll, you know, it'll prevent water from gushing on your stuff, but it's not waterproof. Don't uh, make the mistake of thinking that is a sealed dry compartment. It is not. The front uh, compartment is the same way. This is a hollow front this is not a waterproof hatch i've got it unscrewed already so it just pops off uh, we're going to talk about all that expandable foam you see in there in a minute that is a modification i made and we're probably going to talk at length about that actually because it made a really really big difference in the way this kayak behaved and handled so you got another latch there's no rubber gasket on it it's just a piece of plastic so even in a rainy day if this is sitting in the yard rain gets through that and will get inside the kayak um, I've never been able to find a custom um, cover for it, cockpit cover, so I've just used a piece of tarp and a bungee cord. Uh, I shot a little video of it, of it hanging up, so we'll have a look at what that looks like right now. And that's as easy as that. That's a, about a five by three tarp, I think, three by five tarp. I think I paid seven or eight dollars for it. And it's a piece of um, this shock cord that I cut to the right length and tied in a knot. And I simply strap it around there and we're good to go. We've got enough of a cover. But even with it covered, if it's raining, rain will get in there and you'll take that cover off and find water in the bottom. Now, um, I guess we'll finish, you know, you got your little trays right here, this snaps open, again, not waterproof, it'll keep splashing off to some degree, but as the day goes on, if you've got something like a cell phone in there, it's going to get wet, trust me. Uh, I've put these little rare earth magnets in there, I've actually got one glued to the underside so that my little emergency pliers, in case I forget my good one, stays in there, and then once I'm out fishing... You know, I can just stick them on there. Well, there you go. The magnet just came off, so that glue didn't hold very well in this warm weather. Um, this is a fishing rod holder, but it's a mounted rod holder for when you're actually actively fishing. So I took that out. I never used that kind of uh, fishing rod holder. I use these two fishing rod holders, and that's where I stow my rods when I'm actually on the move somewhere. The handle... Right here is mine. The way I uh, carry this in my truck, I have a load extender and I lift the front end up and then there's nothing to grab onto. This lip is just not enough to grab a hold of, so I've got that handle I can lift up and then slide it up into the truck. So that's another simple addition I made uh, that made all the difference in the world. But the real difference was the expandable foam I put in there. Uh, the way this seat is set up, you can see it's all one piece of molded plastic. There was a little bit of a gap underneath of it, and if you can kind of make out uh, that piece of polystyrene, the white styrofoam, there was a block of that on either side, which gave you a little bit of support under here and here, and that kind of kept the seat up. And so if you hit bumps, it gave you a little bit of a cushion. 
But what would happen was once you were out and moving and hitting those bumps, the styrofoam would go out and just go into the back. And this whole back compartment is completely inaccessible. Um, I mean, you could try reaching around behind the seat and under, but it's not a usable space within the craft. So I, for a long time, about the first month I had this, I just stressed over this. I was trying using seat cushions and all sorts of things. Uh, so the solution of the expandable foam came to me later, and I'll show you why when we look in the front of the boat. Up here, you'll get a piece of dense foam, not like the polystyrene foam. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't know what it's like. The closest I can think of uh, is it's like the kind of foam that pool noodles are made out of, except it's really dense and hard. Uh, not soft like a pool noodle, but it's that real plasticky kind of foam. And there is a partition that sits right up here, but it doesn't wedge upright and stay there. It's like at this weird angle. And as soon as you get to move in, it comes loose and it just flops down and it lays in there and it does absolutely nothing. So I called the company because I didn't know what it was for. Um, it's cut out underneath, so if water was in there, it would still be able to flow underneath of it, even if it was in the upright position. So it's not meant to be a bulkhead or a partition. Again, this is not meant to be a dry area, even if that foam was in there correctly. Mine never sat in there correctly, and I just thought maybe it was like a shipping piece to hold, you know, to keep the structural integrity while it was shipped. So I called, I asked. They said no, that was supposed to be in there, it provided extra buoyancy, so if you capsize, the, you know, the craft can't sink, and so on and so forth. And so I struggled with that, and struggled with that, and struggled with that. And the, the kayak was really uncomfortable for me to sit in, because what was happening was, as this piece was falling and flattening out, the whole kayak would sort of widen and flatten out. Uh, it, would, it would squish out this way and get wider. When you'd force that thing in, it would give it this more rounded structure, and it really opened up the area for my feet and my legs. And it would just never stay that way. I could not get the piece of foam to, to wedge in there properly. So what I finally did out of frustration, being that I don't use that forward compartment for anything anyway, I'm not going on weekend camping trips or anything like that, I got in there one day once and for good and I jammed that piece of foam as upright as I could get it. I couldn't get it quite upright. It's still, you know, leaning at a little bit of an angle. And then I sealed all around the edges of it with the expandable foam. I don't know how well we're going to be able to see up in there. Let me take my glasses off. Okay, we can see that well enough. I sealed all around the edges. I let that dry. I put another layer. I let it dry. I put another layer. I let it dry, etc. And I did the same thing on the inside here. And so in between all of this expandable foam, which goes about from here to here, is that piece of styrofoam or whatever that stuff is. And I did all of that while the kayak was propped up. I put the tip of it up on my chair over here and then the rear end was touching the ground so it was up like this in the air and it allowed the belly to hang down and that gave me that rounded belly the structure locked all that in place and it opened up the area underneath the seat so i was able to do the same thing i just stuck the nozzle of the, the foam was back as far as i could and just sprayed and sprayed and that's about three cans of foam layer after layer. Uh, you can't goop it in there all at once. It doesn't work that way. Um, but I have it nice and thick and now it's rock solid. It's lifted the front of the seat up enough so that it actually gives me this sort of bucket seat uh, feeling which is much more comfortable. It's got some dense foam underneath of me so when I do smack into waves it's got a lot more shock absorption and just the structural stability of it being solid in the middle now makes a huge difference. And then of course, as I said, once I had it, you know, the belly was dropped down and it was opened up, the, the, the foot pedals move and I don't have to keep my feet twisted this way anymore. I can actually keep them that way on the pedals. And I went from having sore ankles and painful feet after about two hours to I can be out there four or five hours now and with the occasional get out and stretch and walk around I'm good to go all day in this thing now I really really like it so let's actually go now and get out on the water 
and we will have an actual uh, discussion about how it tracks and how it moves and you know so on and so forth so let's go now after pretty boy and we'll see this thing in action all right this is how i transport it it's pretty easy just a simple ratchet strap on the back of this uh, load extender which we'll be able to see better in a moment This is where that handle comes in handy. And just like that, we're in the water. Now, if you have to transport it by carrying it, it actually works out pretty good. It's very well balanced where your knee pads are is about the center of gravity so if you've got to hoist it up right there and then up onto your shoulder and then this knee pad actually rests against your hip unless you're extremely tall or uh, unusually short so you've got a pad on your shoulder and a pad on your hip and you're nicely balanced right there in the middle and I'm guessing it weighs about 60 pounds or something like that minus all the gear and additions I've put on it it's 55 60 pounds so it's not light but it's not unpleasantly heavy either. And if you have to go down through any grassy areas or something, of course, it's got the handles fore and aft where you can simply drag it behind you. And that's a piece of cake. I just don't do it here because I don't want to scrape the bottom up any more than necessary. So let me go park the truck. We'll go ahead and get in it. We'll hit it and we will start talking about how it moves through the water and stability and all that sort of stuff. Now this is the only body of water I bring this to so this is where I always get in and out I know there's other people that need to get out in deeper water or at piers or things like that so I have no experience doing that I've always come here uh, the way I generally get in is simply by straddling it and then plopping down when the seat is underneath of me and then all I gotta do is drain my shoes hopefully don't have any gravel in there And I got lots of space to get my feet in there nice and comfortably. Your knee pads are right where they want to be. Hold your paddle the right direction. And you're good to go. So I'm going to go across here and around the bend so we can get into a little bit of shade. And then we're going to actually talk about stability and tracking and all that sort of stuff. So let me get to it, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, I know you can't tell, but we are actually still moving along very gently here, and I wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like uh, as far as tracking goes. So let's have a little bit of a paddle. I'll try to hold the camera as steady as possible. And of course, as I paddle, we're gonna get a little bit of a you know, wobble to one side or the other. once you stop as long as you sit fairly still you go in a pretty good straight line now if I lean a little to the right we'll start banking to the left and if I lean a little bit to the left we start banking to the right so I don't have a lot of experience with other vessels like this as I said this is my first kayak so I don't know if that's normal or not oh look great blue heron wasn't expecting to see that one. It's a shame this camera doesn't do anything for distance or that would be a really good shot. Hopefully you at least got to see that. Uh, at any rate, prior to what I was talking about, before I put all that foam in there and underneath of me, the bottom of this would sit flat and it would almost buckle in this way when I was on the water the whole thing would widen out as I said my feet would have to go really wide and not only did it require a lot more effort to move through the water um, I mean it, it felt like pushing through sand compared to the way it does now but also when I would stop paddling 
I swear by the time we got to that tree right there, we'd be facing the opposite direction. The moment I stopped paddling, we would start turning one way or the other. Um, I know I said earlier that I put up with that for about a month. I meant to say a season. It was all last summer I dealt with that. And again, having no experience, that was me gaining the experience. So about a month ago into this summer is when I decided, you know what, I'm going to make some modifications. I kind of know how this thing feels now. And by rounding that bottom out, by putting that foam in there, it just made all the difference in the world. Now, this is a low budget kayak. The other types of kayaks you can look at that are comparable in size and features are several hundred dollars more. And the only thing I can figure is that the cost of materials and time and labor and all that add up. This I think is much thinner plastic. I think it's polyethylene. It's probably the same material they're all made out of. I think this is just made a little thinner and therefore I would get that thumping and bumping and you could almost feel the buckling plastic underneath of you. Of course it's calm out here tonight but on a windy day or if a boat goes by and there's a wake uh, you could really feel a lot of movement of the plastic and I don't know how much that had to do with anything but I know it used to sit much much flatter in the belly and when I would stop paddling we would go and make a u-turn now the difference is also the feeling of stability I have gotten more comfortable with this now that it's got the more rounded uh, bottom to it when it was flatter I really felt solid. I didn't feel like I did any of this sort of wobbling back and forth at all. Now I really feel like I've got this sort of wobble back and forth. Uh, please remember I am wearing a US Coast Guard approved personal flotation device, properly fitted and worn. Safety first, your next of kin will thank you. Um, so it, it, it felt a little unstable, but once I got used to it, I realized that's that's fine. It, 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 I'm not unstable at all. It actually wants to sit upright. Uh, I've likened it to the little toys, the weevils, where it just it wobbles around, but it always wants to just come back upright. And in shallower water, I've never quite pushed it till I've gone over, but I've leaned so far that I've had the water all the way up to this lip, and I still felt fairly stable. It was up to me to decide to fall out or not. The, the kayak itself still felt rock solid in the water. So other than just a little bit of this, it's fine and once you sort of learn to separate your lower half of your body from the upper half of your body you can allow one to wobble while the other sits fairly still and it's just a fantastic kayak I really really enjoy this kayak um, again I just I can't stress enough the difference it made by opening it up you know propping it from end to end and letting that belly hang down and then rounding that out with foam now if you've got access to some other sort of way of doing that if you've got some sort of high density foam you could cut a plug of yourself and put in there or something as long as the end result is the stiffening of the body and the rounding out and filling out of the body to the shape I'm assuming it's supposed to be and holding it in that position uh, that would still accomplish the same purpose so all in all I'm really really happy with this kayak um, I don't know what else to really say about it again this is the only one I've got any experience with, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. I do know that for the money I've spent on it, this thing has paid for itself 10 times over uh, with the with enjoyment. I mean, this is like therapy to me out here, uh, as you can well imagine, uh, on more ways than one. It's good exercise. I'm just thrilled to death with this kayak, especially for the money I paid for it. So I'm going to head on across the big water over into that shallow cove over there and throw a line out, see if I can't catch anything since I'm out here tonight. Well, sorry everybody, no fish tonight. But thanks again for watching, hope you enjoyed. I know I certainly did. Again, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. I'll be happy to get back to you as long as I get the notification. Thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.